One of the other things that we can do that makes the command line very powerful is I.O. redirection or input and output redirection. This allows us to have a program take its input from something other than the keyboard or send its output to something other than the screen. To illustrate this, we can start with our standard ls-l, which normally prints that out to the screen. And one of the, the first symbol for doing I.O. redirection is a greater than. This greater than here is going to say, don't print this out to the screen. Instead, send this into a file. And you can kind of think of this as an arrow that's pointing in the direction of where the data goes. So it takes it from ls-l and sends it to files.txt. And I run it. And you note it didn't print anything. Instead, there's now a file called files.txt. And we can cat that file. And we get a directory listing here. Okay, so that allows us to stick things into a file. One of the issues with it, though, is it does overwrite anything that was already there. So for example, if I get a smaller set of files like that, and I redirect that to files.txt. Now when I cat files.txt, I get that smaller set. What if I wanted to keep the stuff I had before and just make the file longer, append to the file? Well, we can do that. We just use two greater thans. And the two greater thans will now take that. Actually, I should probably go ahead and do this. In some ways, it really doesn't matter. You'll note that now these things are appended together. I had the first set of three, and then I ran it again with the star.txt, and then I ran it again with the whole directory, and they all got added on to one another. So a single greater than will write the output to a file and overwrite anything that was there. The double greater than will write to a file appending to the end. We can also go the other direction. We can take things as inputs. Uh, so, and we do this with a less than symbol. Now in some ways we don't have any really good examples of, of doing this yet. It's a very handy thing to do when you're programming, especially when you're debugging. There will be times where you find you're typing in the same thing over and over again and it can be handy to have that written to a file so you don't have to retype it. But in some ways we can demonstrate it using cat. So by cat that and then I use the redirection on that file, it prints out the file. I'm like, well, that's nothing special. If you left out the less than it did this. And didn't I say that this is making it so instead of taking it from the keyboard, it's taking it from a file? But does cat take things from the keyboard? And the answer is yes, it does. So if you're just typing cat and you don't give it any arguments, it takes its input from standard input, which if you're not using the less than means it's coming from the keyboard. So if I type stuff now, you'll see that I type something, I hit enter, and cat print echoes it back out to me. Now, one question you might be wondering is, how do I get out of this? Typing stuff won't get you out of at least typing normal words like that. There are three ways that we can kind of stop a program like this. In the case of cat, the nice way to stop it is to hit control and D. That sends an end of input signal. It basically says, we're done with this input. It's like getting to the end of a file. And so it tells cat, you can stop now. So for a program like cat or some of the other things that we've seen, control D is the nice way to stop it. Now when you're programming, sometimes you're gonna write programs that actually just run forever. And since you don't wanna sit there forever waiting for it, you need to find a way to kill it. And the way you can do that is to hit control C. Control C will cancel a process. Another keystroke that you probably shouldn't use all that often is con until you know more about what you're doing is control Z. Control Z takes a process and basically pauses it. It moves it off to the side so it's not running. You can then either use a command called FG for foreground or BG for background to either make it run back in the foreground or to send it off to the background. Uh, but most of the time you should probably control C your long running processes. Uh, don't use control Z unless you know what you're doing because otherwise you'll have a whole bunch of processes sitting there just consuming memory and not really doing anything. In addition to outputting and overwriting a file, outputting and appending to a file, and taking input from a file, there is one more character that we're going to talk about for IO redirection and it's actually in some ways the most powerful 
and that is the pipe. Pipe is on the key that's above the enter key on most keyboards and you have to hit shift to get to it. And what pipe does, is it takes the output of one program and sends it to be the input of another program. So once again, I'll use our ls -l. And I wanna search this for all the files that were written at 3 p.m. Well, remember our command for search is grep. Now we could do this by saying, okay, I'm gonna take that and I'll just write it out and then I could grep for 15 colon in files.txt and I get that output. But I actually don't have to create the file in order to do this. Using a pipe, I can say I want the output of ls to go into a grep. And there we go. So we can get that same thing for from basically one command here by running the ls sending the output of ls into grep. And just like cat, it turns out if you don't give grep a file, it reads it from standard input. We can actually demonstrate that. I can do a grep on 15. And if I type stuff, you'll notice nothing's printing unless I type a line that has the 15. And then it echoes it back. And in my case, it also, the grep is color coding the things that match. Okay, once again, to get out of this, I will hit Control D because that ends the input. One of the things about piping is, while well, I have done a single pipe here, if I wanted, I could take that output and send it to something else by piping it on, and then I could pipe that on, and I could pipe that on. And basically, you can create fairly complex logic just by sending the output of one program into another, into another. If the output of something was really long, so even the if the ls, for example, was going to give us a long listing and there were lots of things that were at 15 and maybe I only want the, the first several or the last several, I might pipe it again to the commands like head or tail so that we could pull off those parts. So that gives you a basic uh, introduction to how you can do IO redirection and some of the things that you might be doing with it. And they really do provide a lot of power that once again the command line gives you that you don't have an equivalent for in a point and click interface.